Hey, what's up? This is Abra here. We have more sneakers this week, and I mentioned a couple of weeks ago the Nike ACG Air Nasu 2 being one of the nicer looking ACG silhouettes in recent times. So we have a pair of them right here, uh, specifically the melon colorway I was particularly enamored by, the ones that you're looking at here, but there were three separate versions of these, each with a fairly similar overall color palette and a quietly technical aesthetic. ACG has definitely been moving in that direction recently and taking more performance-centric design on top of that kind of hiker core aesthetic. So yeah, high time for me to pick some of these up, I think, partly because uh, a lot of my outdoor activities these days have been out in the country rather than in the city, and partly because, well, I just don't need that much of an excuse to buy a fun new pair of shoes. These are right at home with the most recent ACG clothing collection. They come in at £110 or approximately $120, and we're going to be taking a look in some more detail at aesthetics, construction, comfort, fit, and uh, yeah, just see how these things weigh up. Now I've had them for about a week or so, and of course, answer the question, are these worth picking up? Let's find out. Let's look up close at some of the visual elements of the Nike Air Nasu 2. Firstly, I think these are way nicer looking than the Nasu 1. They're more modern and technical, and the design feels more nuanced with several different sections that interact in some way. The big thing here is this translucent grid paneled upper. Ripstop fabrics are used on all kinds of things to enhance strength and stop well, ripping, obviously. And its presence here gives a clear performance-focused look, and an implication this shoe is designed to be worn in more treacherous conditions. Underneath that is a more breathable mesh, which is where the unique colouring of this shoe comes in. Personally, I really like that melon colourway. It's one of the things that drew me to the shoe. It's unusual, it's distinctive, without being too kind of, hey, look at me. And it's extremely cohesive through the shoe as well, blending nicely with the black and the grey. It makes the ripstop grid pop a little bit as well, due to that extra contrast and it accentuates the multi-layered construction of the shoe that's important to the technical appearance. Despite it being present on so much of the upper, I actually don't think it's overbearing at all. That translucent nylon definitely helps mute that colour a little bit, and it's only really on the tongue, on the heel, and on the outsole where you'll find visible unfiltered melon on foot. It looks more like a light grey shoe with melon on it, which is probably the way around that most people would want it to be. Nonetheless though, if you're not a massive fan of this, you prefer something a little bit more monochrome, uh, there is a black colourway as well, and uh, that's probably going to show the dirt up a little bit less as well. The midsole is quite complex looking, and it's one of the few bits that's untouched from the Nasu one. It's pretty nicely shaped, it's got this quite fluid look overall, and these uh, little grooved cutouts throughout. It's definitely not a bulbous retro hiking shoe. The speckled look is a finishing touch, gives you something extra to look at, and it'll probably make you feel less bad about getting these all nice and muddy the first time you take them out. The grey mudguard panels on the bottom of the shoe feel nice and protective, like they're kind of enveloping the shoe, and uh, because of their quite complex shape, they look quite intentional as well. That little panel on the tip of the toe box is actually 3M, and you'll find similar reflective elements throughout this shoe. Uh, on the laces, thanks to that climbing rope inspired pattern, you'll find it around the collar, um, on the lateral swoosh, and even on that big back ACG logo too. At night, this is going to give you pretty good visibility, and even during the day, you'll occasionally find that those little bits just catch the light and give off a nice little uh, kind of reflective pop, which is quite cool. On the topic of logos, the Nasu 2 is actually fairly logo heavy. On top of that lateral swoosh that we mentioned before, there's uh, an extra one just chilling on the toe box there, a little mini swoosh. You've got an ACG logo on the tongue. You've got a big ACG triangle logo on the heel. There's even a little debossed ACG uh, right on the tip of the toe there. That sounds like a lot, but it doesn't actually appear over-branded, I don't think. That lateral swoosh is kind of semi-concealed behind this translucent nylon. The ACG text to the tongue, well, that's going to be covered a lot of the time by laces. So that really leaves the big heel logo as the main standout piece of branding, and people are only going to see that when they're eating your dust when you're overtaking them on the trails. One of my favorite things visually though, which you really get a sense of up close, is just how many fun, playful text elements there are. You've got for outdoor use, stamped proudly on the sole here, as if to remind you exactly what ACG is all about. In a similar fashion, you've got made on earth carved into the back of the sole there. And on the instep, you've got the same text that you'll find inside the shoe. Uh, and again, reinforces that idea that these shoes are designed to be put through their paces. Unlike the logos, a casual observer is probably not 
not going to see any of those things, so it's just a fun little bit of attention to detail. All those statements would be a bit stupid if there was nothing to back them up, however I do think these have some authenticity from a technical perspective and have been designed with all-terrain wear in mind. But before we talk about some of those performance elements I want to go over fit and sizing, uh, that is the reason why you're not watching a bunch of b-roll of me running up and down a hill to prove the technical credentials of this shoe. I bought these in a UK 11 which is my usual size and honestly it feels like the whole shoe is a little bit small. The toe box is quite narrow to the point that it feels like my big toe is uh, kind of hitting against the uh, front edge of the shoe and also you'll notice looking at the sole of these there is quite a significant a sort of cutout on the instep. That's quite common of something like a running shoe and to their credit it does make these feel quite agile. Also saves a lot of weight too doing this. Although it also makes the shoe feel a little bit less stable and it feels like quite a significant portion of my foot is actually sitting kind of outside of the footprint. It's worth remembering that walking or running shoes, you do want a little bit of room in there. You don't want it to feel like your feet are being constricted. So uh, I would definitely recommend going half a size up on these. The only reason that I haven't done that is because it seems like once you get to UK 10, Nike no longer seem to do these in half sizes. Um, and I feel like going up to a UK 12 is uh, also not going to be good. I think that's just going to make them ridiculously big. So yeah, unfortunately, it looks like it's just not working out for me from a sizing perspective. But uh, hopefully you guys don't have the same issue there, particularly if your feet are a little bit smaller and uh, those half sizes are readily available. Anyway, back to the performance side. And that sole is definitely worth talking about further. Not only is it highly shaped on the instep, but at the heel as well. You'll notice that the outsole kind of curves upwards quite a lot. That's done in a way that should help prevent slippage and improve stability on uneven ground, just like in a trail running shoe. The outsole uses a mix of rubbers designed for high traction and durability with a little bit of softness. You can also see these nice big thick lugs on the underside too. Those thick lugs are going to hold right on to soft ground. There is a little bit of cushioning in here thanks to the React Foam midsole that runs throughout. Um, that does give a little bit of kind of springy response as opposed to something that you sink into. I wouldn't say this is the most cushioned shoe in the world, but that is actually not a bad thing. If you're walking around like on trails and softer ground, you don't want something that's really, really soft because um, then you're kind of lacking in stability, basically. But I do think that these are uh, plenty comfortable from that perspective, and I do think that they're comfortable enough uh, to walk around on hard ground, unlike some trail running shoes where the outsole is just ridiculously hard, to the point that you would never really want to wear them on pavement for an extended period. The lacing structure provides a decent amount of tightness, and it also helps tighten up the collar and the back of the shoe to further help lock your foot in place, thanks to tightening the laces, also tightening the strap that they attached to. Simple, but effective. We mentioned the ripstop properties of the upper already. These aren't really water resistant in that while the tongue is kind of gusseted, it's gusseted to the mesh part rather than uh, the ripstop part. So water is going to get in there. Um, I don't really have an issue with that. These are clearly a summer shoe to me. These are a low top. Uh, if you want something Gore-Tex, there are loads of other options. And of course, if uh, something is less water resistant, often it is more breathable as well. And uh, yeah, for summer casual wear, that's probably going to be what you want. One downside that I have to mention of these is a couple of weird manufacturing errors. Firstly is on the right shoe, uh, the other one to this, on the instep it looks like the material kind of hasn't been applied or glued properly because it's got this weird ripple texture. Also some marks can be seen on parts of the translucent upper. On the left one it's actually worse, there's like quite a few uh, little black splotches and it seems like that's underneath the ripstop. So. Um, it wouldn't really be easy to sort that out. So that's a bit of a shame. If I was keeping these shoes, I would definitely want to swap them with a different pair. Um, I think I probably just got unlucky here. But uh, yeah, something that I thought I would mention anyway. One minor detail, I'm not sure if this is mentioned anywhere officially, it looks like there's some Nike grind foam around the collar to provide some extra cushioning and support, which is underneath uh, this nylon woven material here. Uh, you can just kind of see coming through some different like greens and reds and blues and like all kinds of colors. It's really, really faint. You're never ever gonna notice unless you're looking up real close. But yeah, just another little interesting detail of these. Overall, I like these a lot to the point that I would be willing to overlook some of those relatively minor downsides apart from the manufacturing thing on the right instep. Although, because I can't quite get that size that fits me right, 
um, I am going to have to return these. There is nothing more annoying, I think, than having a pair of shoes that is too small. It's just one of those things I'm always conscious of when I'm wearing something that isn't the right size. It's a good addition to the ACG lineup. It feels forward-thinking and modern. It's definitely befitting of the most recent clothing collection. And it's still got a little bit of personality and that kind of tongue-in-cheek appeal. It's definitely not a kind of plain, boring dad hiking shoe. The unique colouring, the decent looks, definitely play into that outdoor space that Nike ACG is trying to exist in without looking like they're taking too much attention or that the user is showing off too much. Good comfort too and a relatively palatable price, I think ACG did a pretty good job with this one. Those are my impressions on the ACG Nasu 2. Again, wish I could have taken these on a proper trail test, but unfortunately they do have to go back so I couldn't absolutely trash them, but I've just been living in the house with them all week instead. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, please do give it a like, it is super appreciated, and if you have any thoughts on the ACG Nasu 2, then please do leave them down there in the comments. I feel like a lot of people are going to like this one, I do think there's a lot to like about this shoe. It's a pretty good looking uh, silhouette overall, I think. So uh, yeah, definitely make yourselves known. And if you've actually picked a pair up, that would also be good to hear from you also. Anyway, that's quite enough from me. So thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week with another video. Shout out to Caleb. Totally forgot about the Stussy Hirachi, which released not too long ago. Yeah, using those kind of tonal details, very different to uh, the traditional Hirachi colorways. But uh, yeah, definitely a cool release for sure. I think that helped put that shoe back on people's radars. Quite a few people who liked some of those variations as well, like the drift and the grip. So uh, yeah, shout out to you guys. Hopefully we do see some re-releases of those other more technical looking models soon. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to catch some more, there's going to be links going up at the top. And if you want to see some new sneaker reviews, things like that, make sure you're subscribed. Um, there's going to be some more videos. Uh, I've had those Rick shoes now. I really should have sent those back, but uh, I will do some content on those. There's some other tech wear based things coming up. Um, some little surprises that I haven't really talked about either. So yeah, keep a lookout for future videos.